Today, we're going to talk about thermoformable polymers in dentistry. So we can understand and we can uh, be in the same channel. When I'm giving a lecture here in, in Mexico, in Latin America, I'll, I like to introduce myself. My name is Marco Tulio Bocanegra Hernandez, uh, same as one of the biggest uh, minds in Rome, Marco Tulio Cicerón. Uh, I, uh, I study my degree, my dentistry degree, degree here in Guadalajara at the Universidad de Guadalajara, translated this to University of Guadalajara. Universidad de Guadalajara, it's uh, the public one here in Mexico. And being on my, my dentistry career, I meet some doctors that are very famous here in Mexico in the area of prosthodontics. And I fall in love with that area. So I decided to take a continuing education in that area. And I took a diploma on cosmetic dentistry and dental aesthetics with uh, almost all of them were doctors that given uh, their classes or lectures in the specialties and the master's programs here in, in Guadalajara. And the reason I'm, I'm here and the reason you are here also it's because of black mufflers. This uh, brand, this trademark, this company is the one that I found. Uh, it's a sport dentistry orientation, but most of all is, pre is prevention about um, doing mouth guards. And uh, the name is uh, something I created with the help of an MMA, a mixed martial arts uh, fighter, promoter and a gym owner also. He talked to me if I have a, like a name for my mouth guards, if I have a, a logo. Because I started in 2011 with my, all of my gym partners, I practiced Muay Thai. And um, 2012, I started making to another gyms. And 2014, this promoter helped me to make my Facebook page. And he told me, well, let's uh, think what type of, what kind of name do you want for your brand? And we thought a lot of, of that. So my last name is Boca Negra. That translated to English is Black Mouth. And that's how Black Mouth Guards uh, got created about my last name and the product I was making. Since uh, 2018, I've been part of a member of the Academy for Sport Dentistry. So everything you're going to see here, uh, as I said, has its uh, basis on journals, on books, of uh, any type of literature that is uh, scientific and it's, proof, it have been, it's, been, it's been proven to work. My hometown is Piedras Negras, Coahuila. I don't uh, have to do too much introduction to the city that I live right now, that is Guadalajara, uh, Jalisco, Mexico, because everything that represents to be a Mexican, it's from Guadalajara or near Guadalajara. So I want to talk about my hometown. It would be a short uh, resume. It's called Piedras Negras Coahuila. The translated to English is black stone because we had a lot of coal. That's why they put it that name. So we found coal. It's in the north of the Mexican Republic and it's across a big state of Texas. So most of my family, uh, to be honest, all of my Boca Negra family, it's uh, from Texas. The nearest uh, cities we have that are famous in this case in the United States, it's San Antonio, Texas, uh, Dallas, Houston, there are between two hours to five, six hours uh, driving from my hometown, from Piedras Negras. I'm telling you all of this because I had the opportunity to work one year in my hometown and to, I have the privilege to know the two worlds of dentistry. All of my courses, my continuing education courses that I give, the mouth care courses that I'm going with Keystone Industries in all Latin America or here in Mexico are based on our reality, Latin American reality. So it's easy, it's based on evidence. To close this part of introduction and go to the topic we have to talk about, 
I'm going to talk about the only thing we have to give to the world, that is this uh, dish, this plate, that is called nachos. So it's very famous, this dish, that Google uh, made this doodle about the creation of the nachos. We're going to talk about then the thermoforol polymers in dentistry and to have, uh, to explain what we're talking about, we have to know the difference between a monomer and polymer. In monomer, we have that's a small molecule of something we have and the a big change or, uh, chain or the mixture between different monomers will give us a polymer that we have in this case uh, represented by circles, we have two white circles, a dark circle, and they, we have this one in a, in a chain in several locations, making a long chain molecule that is part of this monomer. In our case, we're going to talk about ethylene that we have in the, the chemical um, structure right here in the slide, and we're going to repeat in some cases, we have a mixture with resin, with urethane, with a lot of uh, different chemicals, uh, chemical components, but most of them will be based on ethylene. And the big chain of this monomer is going to be called polyethylene. So, to be, is, um, to be easier to talk about this term of formal polymers in dentistry, we're going to change this big word for laminates. Uh, laminates are hard, are soft, but we also have um, a mixture between those that's called dual laminates. When are we going to use the hard ones? When, we, when are we going to use the soft ones? When are we going to use the dual ones? Well, that's the topic of today. We're going to start with the hard ones, then we're going to go to the soft ones, we're going to talk about the bonus, we're uh, offering in this uh, webinar, talk about uh, mouth guards. And after that, we're gonna talk about the dual laminates. When you buy, in this case, a product, a thermal form machine, a vacuum machine with Keystone Industries, there's a sample ca uh, pack you will receive with this uh, machine. That in the sample pack, we have a lot of uh, laminates between hard, dual, soft laminates, some accessories also. And this is part of, the, of that uh, sample pack. You will see some of them being like light blue, some of them being uh, pink, some of them being tricolor. Well, we're gonna talk about uh, one of each one. When, when, when are we gonna use it? And the differences from one uh, of another, and we're gonna start with the hard ones. So, in the hard ones, we're gonna make hard splints. In this case, mm, uh, we can make the hard splints for provisionals, for retainers, for uh, making hard splints for bruxism, uh, surgery splint, base plate, and custom trains. We're gonna talk about uh, from, we're going to talk about each one. So first, these ones are called uh, coping, or this is maybe temporarily crown and bridge material. These are hard splints. The difference between each uh, one another, it's going to be this one. In this case, we're going to see some of them being a little bit cloudy, and another, uh, the other laminate is going to be more clear. It's going to be crystal, crystal clear. The difference between them, we're going to see it in the next slide, but these ones are made, or the function of these ones are indicated for making, in this case, a fixed uh, partial prosthesis in provisionals, maybe some crowns, provisionals, maybe also inlays, onlays, uh, veneers, boundlays, everything that it's uh, in restoration in prosthodontics. If you want to do some provisionals, instead of using maybe your polysilicon, your silicone, uh, condensation silicone, we can use also these type of laminates. And, uh, some doctors also recommend this for uh, making the bleachings and the home bleachings, but I'm not so familiar with that type of uh, splints with this type of material, but it can be used also. We can find it in different thickness, in 0.020, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025, 0.025
0 0.30, 0 0.40 of an inch, and we can only find the crystal clear one in 0 0.020, which is the difference between these cloudy and these crystal clear laminates. Well, the cloudy is made of is it's made out of polypropylene, and the other one is called it's made of EVA. The polypropylene because of its properties, it won't uh, adhere. It won't be this uh, chemical reaction to be adhesive with a splint. So if you put, uh, you make your impressions, your uh, dental cast, you make your wax up, you make the, the you duplicate it in, in cast, you take uh, the laminate, you, uh, you make the thermoforming process and you will have your splint with the provisional. You can make a provisional with resin, you can make it with, uh, with acrylic, with this acrylic and the material you want. But instead of using this polyxylexane, you can use this uh, splint. And if you use the cloudy one, the coping ones, you can remove it and uh, this provisional will stay in the area you're walking, working. The other one, it, it says it also won't adhere, but I found that it adheres a, a little bit, so it, uh, it sticks a little bit, so maybe if you want to make it like a polysiloxane, uh, you can use the cloudy one, the polypropylene one, the coping, but if you want to make it like a splint, a retainer, the, the patient put in, puts on and has the provisional uh, of that bridge you're making, it can be done also. We have another type of uh, splints made of EVA also, but in their properties, these ones are a little bit more hard. These are harder than the last ones, and the indication for these ones are for retainers, provisional splints, and the thing is you will find is 0.030 of an inch. You want something harder? you have this option. It's, uh, we can find it in different uh, type of thickness in between 0.5 millimeters to 2.5 millimeters. It depends what you're working, what you're working on the patient is uh, the thing that you will need. We're talking about heart splints for a patient that may have uh, bruxes. You may uh, also talk about patients that have some excessive growth of bone in the palate area and you have to remove it by surgery. You need something that puts the soft tissue on its place. You can make a surgery splint with this material. Um, if you want something that you know will help the patient when he bites and he's a patient that he just uh, finished his orthodontic treatment, you can use a retainer with this type of laminate also. But there are another, uh, this case, uh, Laminates. We have this type of laminate that is made or is indicated for denture bases. We're talking about total processes, total dentures. We, we can use this one instead of using acrylic, wax, the light cure uh, sheets. There's a lot of options you can use. And this one oh, is another one that can uh, be used in your patient. You have your dental cast, your thermoform, you cut, you polish, and you have your base. It uh, sticks to, well, the, the wax will stick to this base, also the acrylic, so you don't have problems if you're making the wax and rim uh, uh, process, when you're taking, making the teeth uh, tests, you're seeing the profile of your patient with the wax, if the, that labial support. When you're making the total prosthesis, it can be done also with this type of uh, laminates. We can find it in 0 0.060, 0 0.080, and 100 of an, an inch in this case. And the last one of the hard uh, laminates is this one, that its uh, function is to make the custom impression trays. We can use also acrylic, we can use uh, light cure uh, resin sheets, but we have this another option that is done the same way as the past one. The only difference is in this case 
uh, when you buy this type of laminates, it will uh, it will bring also a sponge that will uh, serve as a spacer. I think probably in English, in, in Spanish it's espaciador, and that we will help you to give that space you need for your impression material. It depends what material you're going to use in the space you will need for your uh, material, and this sponge will give you this uh, this space. That's uh, the hard plants, the hard laminates we can found in the in the market, in the websites. It depends on which is your dental provider. Now we're gonna talk about the soft materials. After that, we're gonna talk about why use hard splints, why use uh, soft splints in patients that have problems with their uh, temporal mandibular joints, they have uh, this dysfunction, they have or uh, myofascial pain, they have uh, uh, headaches, migraine. So first we're gonna talk about the materials, then we're gonna talk about what the literature says about this. In soft splints, uh, we can see the, we, we know that the, most of the indications are for making bleaching uh, in our patients, so mouth, uh, mouth guards, night guards. And well, this is uh, one uh, that I love, is laminate, because it's the same as any type of uh, soft laminate for making bleachings or topical fluorides. But the difference in this one is it has a little sponge that will absorb the material and the material will stay in the area you want to apply. It happens sometimes that you, a patient, after you explain to him, they can put a little bit of uh, a peroxide you're using for the bleaching, just a little bit, and maybe they put a lot of material, maybe they go to their gums, maybe they go uh, out of the splint. Well, in this case, it won't happen because the sponge will absorb this material, and it can help us and to have a better result in these cases. So this is uh, the first lamina I talk, uh, have talked about, that it has a side. In this case, the sponge side is going to be facing the, the, the model. So if your machine goes from up to down, that's, we didn't have problems. The EVA goes to the heating part, and the sponge will go to your uh, model. Your machine goes with a swinging type of uh, heating device. Well, remember, if you're going to heat, the uh, phase you're heating has to be the EVA, and the phase that is going to be uh, in contact with your model has to be the sponge one. We have another type of soft laminates. This one, the indication is for soft, soft bruxim appliance, appliances and topical fluorides. This one is called Night Guard. This is especially made for making soft uh, splints for patients that have bruxins. bruxins. In this case, the laminate has a thickness of 0. Uh, 120, talking about three millimeters, that it's uh, one of the thickness the journal said, that's the optimal thickness between three millimeters, four millimeters, is the best describing on the journals on the articles we're going to talk about. You'll see a little uh, logo there that it says Proform Night Guard. We're going to talk about that laminate in a few slides, but this is also another laminate that has a side. This part that says Proform that has a laminate has to be in touch with the heating device and the other part has to be in contact with the model. We're gonna talk about that in a few slides and we're gonna see in a video how can you assure that this proform laminate lands on the area it has to be. We're talking about that this uh, laminate has to be uh, thermoform behind the central, the upper central incisors. So if you put your laminate, you put your model, maybe you don't know how you put it, how to know it's gonna be landing at that point. Well, I'm gonna uh, give you a little video so you can watch how you can assure it's gonna be landing on that site. Now we're gonna talk about what I love the most, 
well, the reason I made uh, uh, black mouth guards, we're gonna talk about these soft screens that are made for mouth guards, sports mouth guards. There are different types of laminates to make in mouth guards. This is the, here in Mexico, they call it the economic one, the cheap one. But if it's cheap, maybe we think it's uh, not as, it has, it's not as quiet uh, quality we want, but no. I have seen articles that said this one are better rated than other ones. And I think uh, it's not depending of it's cheap, but it's um, more uh, expensive. It depends on the quality of the material, of the impact for distribution. So it depends on many factors. But this one, I love this because of the mixture of the uh, custom laminate you want to make. In this case, uh, the university that I went to, Universidad de Guadalajara, had uh, their teams called Black Lions. Uh, well, they call it Leones Negros. And the colors we use are red, yellow, and black. And this is the jersey they use on the on their soccer teams, on the university. And this is the, the logo we have of university. So I thought about uh, making one of my university, a mouth guard with the colors of my university. So I cut this, uh, these laminates. I, I make my own uh, laminate with these colors. And I have my mouth guard made out of these colors, of the colors of the university. So that's why I use a lot of these uh, laminates because you can make your custom laminates depending on the colors of your patient wants, you have the colors of the team he's playing. So it's, that's a pretty cool thing to do with this type of laminates. But you can also find it in another thickness that is 120, three millimeters, that these ones are called youth because they are made for pediatric patients. We're talking about patients that are 12 years old and below. Why don't we use four millimeters? Uh, it's because they don't, they are not exposed to impacts as an adult will be. It's not the same with a professional football player to a junior high or a high, a high school player elementary school players, not the same. Maybe we know some guys that uh, they are almost two meters tall and weighing like 80 kilograms and they are maybe 11 years old. Well, they ha that happens a lot right now, but, but the football leagues, some of the, well, all of the boxing uh, councils, the organization, they have these uh, rankings between the weights, the weight class. So if we know our patient is in the upper weight class, we need to make it with an adult. Uh, it doesn't matter if he has, he is 10 years old, we need to use something that it's appropriate for the force it would be uh, exposed to. And we can find also these laminates for making mouth guards. This is the premium area. These are, the indications are the same for these three ones. The difference is that the first one, we can mix it to make our custom laminates. The second ones, is, uh, they're indicated for 12 years old patients and below. And this one, the difference is it has uh, already uh, three colors mixed in this laminate and it has the pro form area also. We can find these type of laminates in one color, in two colors, we can find also in three colors, maybe with a little bit of glitter. And also we have this uh, type of laminates that are called tie-dye. So we have a lot of colors we can uh, base, base to make our design for the custom-made mouth guard. So we can make a better mouth guard uh, based on evidence, what, uh, we, what we need to do. We're gonna be seeing some clips about the process 
of uh, this is this part this part of the process is part of the protocol we do in black mouth cards to assure we are making good mouth cards and they are based on the evidence we have found uh, through the years and this is the first tip I'm gonna give you. Later you will see these uh, videos on uh, Keystone Industries Latin America, Keystone Industries uh, Dental, Facebook sites as pro phone tips. So you're the first person that are watching this type of, of clips. When we are thermoforming these laminates, the part that says proform has to land in the back part, the palette area of the central incisors. You will see that I'm using here a pin that I pinched through the laminate in the upper part of this uh, proform laminate. I put it on my vacuum machine. I will lower this frame until I get this pin to touch in this, in this case, uh, papilla, the papilla. And I will know that I'm, uh, I, I know I we are sure that this part will land in the palette area of the central incisors. Here I'm lowering down the frame. I'm repositioning the model. I know that's gonna be well, so I take out the pin, and the result I'm gonna have is this. Uh, I had a problem here with the screen. Sorry about that. I'm gonna. My presentation broke down, shut down, so I'm gonna reopen it. Okay, so the result we're gonna have is Here. Okay. Is this? I use the pin, so I lowered my frame. I repositioned my model, and after I do the back informing process, I will know that the laminate will land in the area I want. So you will see you're seeing the product of this pin technique. There is the area, there is the central incisors, lateral incisors, the canines, and we have this proform laminate in that area. Why the, the brand, why did, uh, does Keystone Industries put this proform laminate in that area? We know, and we will see in further slides, that the difference between making a hard splint or a soft splint is the effect that has the spleen on the forces. The soft splints will absorb this impact, this force, and the hard ones are gonna redistribute the stress that's going to be applied on the splint. So we need something that can be both at the same time or something that can help us in this case. So the, these type of laminates, the ones that has a pro form, divides its uh, thickness into parts. First part is the color one, and it's gonna be two millimeters, and the other two millimeters is gonna be a clear one. So four millimeters at point, point, uh, 160 of an inch, it's going to be divided in two, in color, in clear, and between those, we're gonna put this profound laminate, so you can uh, know you're buying the premium laminate, and you have this support. What happens with this proform uh, uh, laminate? When you receive a uh, front impact, the force is gonna move uh, for, uh, backwards your central incisors. And if you don't have this stop uh, area or the force or the hardness you need, maybe you will throw some of the impact, but uh, the impact is gonna be only there in the front uh, tooth. 
but having this laminate in the back side, in the palate area, when you receive this impact in the front uh, area, it will stop the motion and we will redistribute the air, uh, force to the premolars and molars. That's why they put this laminate. That's why it's important to know the function of this laminate and what happens if we put it, what happens if we don't put this uh, perform area where it should be. Maybe if you uh, have accidents in sports, maybe you have uh, been part of those uh, accidents, maybe you made those accidents, maybe you are the patient that's uh, having that trouble. Well, sometimes we don't stop and think about what's going on in sports, in our patients, we talk to our patients, we know he's a soccer player, she's a cheerleader, or he's a cheerleader. Well, sometimes we, we think, the mouth guards are only for the persons or the people that plays uh, or that practice contact sports, that plays uh, football, that plays basketball only, boxing, uh, mixing martial arts. Well, this video you will see, uh, it uh, has some of the accidents I have uh, watched in YouTube that are very related to the, our topics that can describe better that type of uh, thinking that only the contact sports need uh, mouth so i'm gonna leave you with this video this is the only time you're gonna watch it and when we uploaded this to your youtube channel it won't be able to see so pay attention to the video
fiberglass. You see, there are many sports that are using this type of mouth guards. And black mouth guards started or was born with that uh, same question a lot of our patients will have. Have you seen, well, the question uh, uh, partner in the gym asked me was, have you seen the mouth guards, the, the boxers, that the uh, Muay Thai fighters, and mixed and martial arts fighters use? The mouth guards, have you seen them? Well, yes. Have you seen they are customized, they have like names or something like that? Well, I have seen them. You're a dentist? Yes. Who makes them? And that was like mind blowing for me because here in Mexico, in a lot of parts I have been, I have the opportunity to travel. It's the same. In the basic program in schools, they don't teach you how to make these uh, mouth guards. So I started uh, thinking about that question. I couldn't sleep that day. And from that question, this whole idea of black mouth guards was born. Right now, we have the privilege. Well, not right now, right now, because you know what's happening in the world right now. Uh, thanks to COVID-19. But um, I have seen some news that this Saturday, some of the soccer leagues in Germany will start. The soccer league here in Mexico will start in two or three weeks, I remember. Uh, sports is going to be, uh, again, reopening the stadiums. Will Well, the, only the these games. Uh, some of them will be with no crowd. But we will see sports again in our televisions, in our cell phones, our tablets, and we will see this type of, uh, of images. The fighters showing up their mouth guard. This is yakker. Get on. We're going to use this type of uh, this, uh, publicity, free publicity. We can use it with our patient. Well, have you seen this type of fights? Have you seen these uh, uh, players like uh, LeBron James, Stephen Curry? They are always biting, chewing on their mouth guards. Well, we can use that type of uh, videos to make, uh, to, to convince our patients. So can you, this, in this case, we have MMA, rugby, soccer. We have uh, grass hockey, we have field hockey. We have boxing, we have basketball, and we have also rodeo. In this case, that rodeo guy, I think he was from Brazil, but a lot of uh, uh, riders, bull riders from the United States and Canada also wear uh, mouth guards. Sometimes here in Mexico, it happens a lot, we try to convince our patients to, uh, to make them a mouth guard, a custom-made mouth guard. But some of them are very cheap. They don't want to spend too much money on that. They say uh, they can find it in sports stores, very uh, cheap ones. Maybe they can go online in that, uh, that some sports uh, stores, like the one with the, um, you know, what type of stores I'm talking about. So we're gonna talk the, we're gonna talk about the types of mouth guards we can find in the in in, in internet or maybe on the, in the department, uh, how do you call it? Uh, well, in, in the stores. The first ones are the stock ones that are, they are made uh, sometimes in another type of materials, not EVA, it's not a polypropylene. It uh, depends on the brand, but the process is the same. It's gonna be an injection machine that is going to inject the type of material they're gonna be making. And that pattern is going to be the same that they're being, it has been used since the 70s, the 80s. So it doesn't change a lot. You will see the blue mouth guard and you, you see that has a, a round arch. But we know that our patients, there are not all, all of them like that. Some of them have more triangle uh, arch. Some of them have more square arch. So, it won't fit to them. These type of mouth guards, the stock ones, the patient has to adapt to the mouth guard, not the mouth guard is going to adapt to the, 
to the user. So um, if you want to uh, apply some heat to make drown it on hot water, the structure won't change. If you apply too much heat, you're only gonna melt it and that mouth guard's gonna be ruined. So these type of mouth guards are the less protective ones. But in my opinion, this is only time this is the only time I'm gonna talk about my opinion. These ones are the not the ones that has uh, a lot of injuries. It is not the is not the number one on the injuries. The bullet bite are the ones that make or have more injuries. I'm gonna tell you why. Ball and bite uh, mouth guards, you buy that one, you order by uh, email, it arrives to your home or you maybe you took it out of the shelf, you put it in hot water, then the instructions say you have to bite it and you have to make a, like a sort of motion and it will adapt to your, to your mouth. Well, some of them uh, have pretty good fit on the mouth of the patient, but it doesn't have that thickness enough, so the forces that's gonna be exposed to the patient will be absorbed by this type of mouth guards. And we can have two, trouble, two problems with the, this type of mouth guards. The first one, that is, uh, the name says it, Boil, boil and bite. If you put it too much time on the boiling water, it's gonna lose its form, it's gonna melt, and it is uh, it's going to be trash. You won't be able to, to repair the, that mouth guard, so it, uh, the life of that mouth guard is ended right there. Another uh, thing that can happen is they don't say you how much strength you have to put in that bite when you adapt this type of mouth guards. Some of them have an acrylic part in the lower uh, part of the mouth guard, so you can't go through it, but most of them don't has, that doesn't have this type of uh, protection. So it's soft, it's softened by hot water, you put it in your mouth, you bite hard, and you go through this mouth guard, and it will be also trash. Why I said uh, that stock ones are not the top one of injuries related mouth guards and the boil one, boil and bite ones are. When you buy and you have used this type of mouth guards, you will know that I'm telling the truth. When you buy a stock mouth guard, you try it on, you know that, well, it doesn't feel so, fit so well. Uh, maybe I need to buy it on so it won't fall off. I know that I'm unprotected, and in some cases it will help me, but this is not the best that I can get. In the case of ball and bite mouth guards, you bite it, you uh, feed it to your mouth, and it fits very well that it will stay sometimes in the upper arm, and you think you're protected. You go and you have confidence nothing's going to happen to you, but what happens, you get your first heat in the mouth, boom, you have your teeth blown out. In the first one, you're not confident at all, so you are a little, you have some precaution of not having that problem. You're, you're being cautious. In the ball and bite ones, you're, you feel secure, so you go and play, like nothing's going to happen to you, and that's why I have seen that the ball and bite ones they give us more work. And the custom-made ones, well, they are made um, based on your dental uh, model, your dental cast. So if it doesn't feel fit very well, if the prob is problem of the dentist who took the impression, or if he, well, I didn't research for this word, when you made the dental cast, when you feel it with your Gibson, the, the impression, or maybe the person who elaborates or manufactures the mouth guard made a little mistake. In my case, I am the guy who takes impressions, to feel, feels the impressions also, and uh, that makes the mouth guards. The design, sometimes uh, our designer made them, 
uh, we have uh, a team in Black Mouthguards, but I'm the head of the team. I'm the face of the team. So anything goes wrong, you're going to see me. It's my fault. If it, anything is uh, fine or it's cool or the patient loves it, they are only going to see me. They don't see the people that are working behind me. So uh, I have to work as best I can so I can get the better results and I can have that uh, uh, reaction for the patient. One of the biggest uh, pros it has, uh, besides that is made of your dental model, it's, it can be done to the colors, to the likes the patient has. If he says, I want something dark with rock uh, signs and rock hands, my name with lightning bolts, everything the patient imagines, it can be done. The only times we can do that is if it's not uh, compatible with your mouth or if it's gonna have hurt you more than uh, protect you. So anything the patient imagines can be done on this type of mothers. The process I can divide it in four steps. The thermoforming, cutting, and the, uh, the reshaping the mouth guard and polishing the, the mouth guard. Here we're going to talk about with uh, basis on art, uh, articles from journals. Why are we doing the protocol we do in black mouth guards? We're, we're going to start with the thermoforming process. First, what is recommended in this case by the doctor Misuhashi, he says. Uh, that depending on the height of the model, it will be the angle it would have this uh, occlusal plane. So he studied different types of heights and he found that the one that is in the slide, 20 millimeters from the base of the model to the uh, incisor angle, incisor's edge, and 15 millimeters in the first molar uh, mesh vestibular cusp, taking that difference, this made a certain angle that this plus the thing we're gonna see in the next slide will give us an ideal thickness for out of mouth guard and uh, it will be as uh, regular as possible. So the height of the model and the droop we're gonna have with our laminate. The literature says between 15 to 25 millimeters. We're talking about uh, half of an inch to an inch and a half. I think it's the, the equivalent. Sorry, I'm talking about uh, millimeters or um, metric system. Uh, that's that I. That's that one that I use, and I have been using a lot of life, so it's difficult to uh, get to know your type of. Uh, measures. So in this case, 15 to 25 millimeters, how do I measure this? Some guys tell you put a laser in the 15 millimeters or 25 or 20 millimeters, the 20 millimeters in this article says is the best uh, height of the troop. Uh, but if you buy, in this case, the backing machine, machine the third from Keystone Industries, the lower frame that it's beneath or it's below, the laminate has this length, 15 millimeters. So if you put your eyes on the laminate and you see a little belly going down that frame, it's time to, uh, to release the frame and put it down in thermal form. We're gonna see it right here in the model. The camera is almost at the same level as the laminate. We are taking our heating device to the laminate. We're gonna wait until we have this uh, sag, this group between 15 to 25 uh, millimeters. If you watch carefully, you will see that the little heating device is at, uh, is very red or orange. There's gonna be another tip I'm gonna give in another slide, but you will see it and that it will help you a lot. Until it's red, you can put it on the laminate. So 
right now we're gonna go a little forward in the video so you can watch that little belly that's going right there i know that it's 15 millimeters right now so i lower the frame and i start vacuuming my uh, laminate to make my mouth hurt as I said at the beginning, all of we do in black mouth hurts is ba based on evidence. In this case, Dr. Mitsuhashi in the year 2011 uh, released this article. The name says it all. A method to maintain the thickness of the mouth guard after the vacuum forming process changes of the holding condition of the mouth guard sheet. In the methods and the conclusions, we find that 20 millimeters in the anterior area is the best and 50 millimeters in posterior teeth are the best to make this angle. This plus this uh, bag, this group, uh, um, having the length between 15 to 25, 20 millimeters being the optimal, will give you or will maintain the thickness. So this is an effective method to clinical use. So. I see this article, I read this article and say, well, we're gonna change our protocol. And a lot of uh, another articles based on this evidence that the Dr. Uh, Mitsuhashi says. Another tip I'm gonna give you is in the area of uh, polishing. I'm not talking, uh, right now, I'm not gonna talk about why I use, uh, what are we using to polish our mouth guards. This is gonna be in a finished uh, part the last part of the, this webinar. The, this doctor, Almeida, he says that the best uh, polishing system we can use, it depends on what brand or what type of brush that you're using, it doesn't matter. But you have to use also about uh, the polishing system, you have to use also some heating system. So, how do we know this uh, polishing system will be more effective if we use this heating system? Well, when we use uh, our polishing system, we'll be watching that it's going to be a little buff, a little uh, opaque, this area, and we want it to be shiny again. What we can do, some guys say, some doctor, well, guys, uh, some doctor said that you can use uh, chloroform to polish by chemic re chemical reaction, and after that you can use some degreaser and apply some heat. In this article, uh, they say that the better system they found is any polishing system associated with hot air. So you will watch it right here. I'm using, in this case, a flame, a pencil torch. If you can use a pencil torch flameless, is the best you can do. In this case, I brought back that shiny part just applying this uh, heat, this uh, fire to the mouth guard. It's better to use flameless torch because it won't uh, burn as quick as if you use the flame torches, in my case. Another tip I'm gonna give you about the design is based, based also in some findings uh, that Dr. Maeda uh, have found. How long or how posterior can we go with our design? This article says it can be done as first molars, complete first molars. Another article that I have found in the area of prosthesis, they say that the half of the second molar can be done. So between the second half of the second molar or the first molar completely, that will be the posterior limits. From our vestibular region in this uh, area, we can go minimum three millimeters deep. So if your model is four millimeters and uh, you can make it a mouth guard for four millimeters in this area, it's all right. If you go deeper, it will have more retention but the protection will be the same. In the palate area is the findings of this doctor, of Dr. Maeda. In the lower, in the 
uh, I'm sorry, in the upper uh, image in the center, that is a gray mouth guard, you will see that it has this uh, arc that it is two millimeters from the cervical region. Well, that was his finding in 2006. 2009, he modifies this to the lower part of the image, the one that is sky blue, and he says with one millimeter above the cervical region, but contouring the area, we can have the same protection as if as we have two millimeters. If we have four, five, uh, six millimeters, we go to the palate foveolas, it's going to be the same. But minimum, we have to have, we need to have two millimeters or one millimeter, but contouring all of the cervical region. What I said, you need to wait until this heating device gets uh, red. If you do it before, you will have uh, the biggest problem that you can have with mouth guards. Different thickness in different areas. And you're gonna waste a lot of time trying to be as uh, regular as possible. So just wait until it's red. You will see in this video that the middle part of the heating device is brighter than the loop ones. And what happens if we don't wait? You will see how it's turning red, the heating device. If we put our laminate, if we put a heating device up the laminate, on the laminate, it will heat more in the areas that, it's, that are uh, first red than the areas that got red after. So it's gonna be softer in the areas that got heated first than the areas that got heated at last. So if you wait until it gets red, you will get the same heat upon all of the laminate. It's gonna be a regular heat and it will give you a better fit on your mouth guard. What temperature is gonna give you on the laminate? The journals said it has to be between 80 to 120 uh, Celsius degrees. So if you get uh, until you wait until you get red on the heating device, you're gonna be in that uh, spot. This is another video, this is another view. You can put a mirror so you're not going to be leaning to watch if it's red. And as I said, everything based on evidence. The evidence is this article by Dr. Almeida. And they took the. Sorry, this is Miso, Miso Hashi also. He, he took the, the front tooth, in this case, the central incisor, and he measured in different points. He took also uh, the first molar in the vestibular area and the cluster area, and they also measured these points. You will see the central images. Where are the points they're measured? We have two groups in the table that is in the right side. Group one and group two. The first group, they uh, measured the temperature on the upper side, the side that is going to be in contact with the heating device. And the group two, they measured the uh, temperature in the cold face that is not facing the, the heating device. And he saw that if you measure on the upper side, you will have more. Uh, different uh, things. It's going to be different, it's gonna not, not going to be as regular as possible. Other, the other, on the other hand, if you take the temperature in the cold side until it's 120 Celsius, you will see there's not too much difference between the areas they measure. So he says that the best you can do is to wait until you have this group until 20, uh, 15 to 25 millimeters, millimeter, 25 millimeters, and if you can measure the temperature on the lower side, it's going to be better. This is part of the process we, we use. Now, what accessories can make you the life easier? 
Uh, I know we, we are a little over time. I think it's one, it was planned to do one hour the, of the webinar. We're going to take a little, a little more minutes, but it's important to talk about all of this so you can, you can know why are you doing this if you don't know. If you know, well, you're uh, and in, the, uh, in the other hand, you're, you're in, in uh, our goal to give you the best uh, instruments so you can have the best results. The accessories you can have to make your life easier, to make the mouth guards faster, are these ones. We're gonna talk about uh, each one of those. The first, the Instacool one, is uh, indicated to reduce time and better, have a better fit. It's a uh, coolant agent. His name says it all, Instacool. So you have cool instantly. It's based on North Lorraine. North Lorraine is also used in dermical problems. You have uh, some, something you want to be removed, like a mole or something. It has been used to apply as cold anesthesia. They apply the North Lorraine, they cut it, they stitch, and you don't want to have no pain because it's cold, cold at all, it's freezing in that area. So we freeze the material so we can remove it from the model and work with it, having no problems. The literature says you have to wait one hour until you can remove it from your model. What happens if you don't do that? You will have a distortion of the, of the material. So wait for an hour if you, if you can. If you can't, you need to have some cooling agent. We have uh, also to use a separator, uh, especially if we have, uh, in this case, machine the third or another uh, accessory we're going to talk about later, that the laminate will uh, get into those areas between the teeth uh, and it will be hard to remove. Or sometimes you want to remove the spleen and you broke the, the model. So this will help you to release it easily. This one's called tree epoxy mold release spray. And it's, it's that, it's a silicone based spray, mold release spray. We will reduce time of working and it has no residue. If you apply it, you will see that easily absorbs the, the model, this product. So you have to use it like this. You position your model, you check if it's in the right place, you, everything's all right. And before you start in applying heat to laminate, you apply your separator, in this case, a tree epoxy mold release spray, and you can uh, then thermoform your laminate. It's a quick absorption of this material. To cut, you can use any type of bird that it has a cross cut, and it's uh, between blue, uh, red, white, or or yellow code on the on the burr, but there's also another type of burrs like this one. It's called silver. This one is indicated for cutting the splints and the acrylics. We're talking about the laminates hard, being hard or soft, and the acrylics. It has this special design, so it has like an ink tank or air intake, so you can uh, play ap apply some pressure and the acrylic or the laminate won't uh, get stuck on the bird. It also has these particles. So when you use this type of bird, it's gonna be uh, beginning the polishing system. It's, gonna, it's not going to be like some guy took the spleen and took it off or ripped it off with their, with their teeth. You will see the difference with these types of bird. You will see in this video, how I apply some pressure and the laminate won't stuck on the zebra. There I'm, I'm cutting, reshaping, and you see, you don't, I don't have that problem of being uh, stuck with the material. And it's being polished at the same time. It's not the final polishing system we want, but it will help us to reduce time also. It has a flat angle also in the tip, so I can use it to mark the design that I want. That's why I use this corner. Now I know w which are my limits, what are my limits, and I will cut it with my zebra. 
and the polishing system, we can use also this Hero Miniature Scotch Bright. That if you use the silver, you will you will only need the red one and the black one, the medium grit and the fine grit. You will not need the coarse grit that is the brown one. But if you use using another type of bird, you will need this grit to make the better uh, polishing system. These one also are indicated for splints and acrylics. They will last longer if you only use it on splints. If you use it with, with acrylics, you will know that acrylics is harder, so it will uh, last a little bit uh, less than if you use it on splints. You, you will see here how I use it on the same mouth guard. I apply pressure, I make all of the periphery round. I want all the edges to be rounded. So if you feel something that is pointy, that it uh, feels like uncomfortable for your fingers, in the mouth is going to be uh, 10 times more. So it, you have to assure that everything is rounded. In this case, I use the, the coarse one, and we need to use the medium and the fine for the last and apply the heat. We also have this uh, accessory that's called vacuum dome. This is one of the most unknown accessory and the best you can have if you want more pressure. We have several types of vacuum machines and pressure machines. Uh, you can buy some machines between 200, 300, 600 dollars uh, from a machine, uh, vacuum machine. But if you want to buy something that has more pressure, like a pressure machine, you will have to spend between two, three, four, maybe five thousand dollars. So it's a big difference between those machines. So if you want the best quality that a pressure machine can give, can give you, but you don't want to spend as much on those machines, or you have a Mackie machine, you can buy this type of uh, accessory. This one is plugged into your compressor, a compressor and will uh, have more pressure to the model. What, uh, what is the function of this one? With the air of the air compressor, air compressor, you will apply it on top of your machine as the, at the same time you're making your vacuum machine vacuum. So between the negative pressure of the vacuum machine and the positive pressure of this vacuum dome, you will have better fit you will make this type of, uh, uh, of mouth curves, of screens. You will see how it's gonna go in these closed areas that normally won't go, the material. You will see that fit. In the left uh, image, you will see that it's a two layers uh, mouth guard. Both are crystal clear. So you will see the difference in the half of the second model that has two laminates and one laminate it it's, uh, has that chemical fresh, uh, mix, you know, fusion, fusion between those laminates because we have the right temperature and we have the right pressure. And you will see in the inside part that it will uh, mark everything that has in the closed faces, between the, the, the teeth, all of the anatomy is going to be uh, like impressed in the, in the material. It's like taking an impression, but in this case with the mouth guard, using the vacuum dome. Now, to finish the, this uh, webinar, I'm gonna talk about using hard or soft splints. As I said before, if you use a hard splint, you will redistribute stress, and if you use a soft splint, it will absorb impact. This slide I will, is a gift for me to you. This one I use it on my MathGuard courses. This uh, article is based on MathGuards. What happens if we use a rigid, a hard MathGuard in sports? If we're using a Michigan splint in sports, it can help us? Yes, it can help us only if the impact is uh, produced by a soft object. If we use this same uh, splint for hard objects, it won't help us at all. So we need something that it's hard for soft objects and we need something that's soft for hard objects. Let's take, for example, basketball. They play 
uh, well, I used to play basketball also. We play with uh, ball the basket the basketball uh, that's like a balloon. It has air on in the inside, so if you had you get hit by the ball. It's only some leather with air, so a hard plane will help us. But in basketball also, we have sometimes people being elbowed, people being uh, uh, having head collisions, having uh, collisions or hitting the ground. And so we have also hard object impacts. So we need a mouth guard that is hard and soft at the same time to be uh, effective if we have the impact of soft objects and hard objects. In the courses that I give, we explain how we do it, how can we, how can we have this product that is hard and soft at the same time. And I'll give you a hint, we only use soft materials. Based on that and the constant, uh, uh, the constant doctors that are asking me, why do you use soft instead of hard? Why do you use hard instead of soft? I try to make this uh, easy to understand based on literature and based on some specific cases. We're gonna go on chrono chronological order. First, 1985, we have Dr. Singh. He is from, uh, from India, but he's uh, studying um, in England. And he says that he wants to study if the soft claims will have some colossal changes. After the tests were done, he found that you know, it would happen. A close contact points before will change after using the soft splint. This uh, responds to the uh, like if it was an orthodontist move, the pressure we apply some, in some points, if we have these premature contacts, it will apply pressure and it will have this occlusal change, it will have this intrusion of the tooth, but this intrusion will be inside of the limits of the periodontal ligament. So it's not going to be four millimeters, five millimeters of intrusion, maybe it will be a half millimeter, one millimeter, and it, that will help us to reduce the problems we have with our patients. And he says it's highly recommended for diagnosing muscular and occlusal dysfunction. It can be done uh, also as a temporary splint. And, and he says uh, that the, the things we took from this article as if we have, is that we have these occlusal changes that will help us to reduce some headaches, some migraines, some problems with it, our TMJ. Later, 1988, uh, Dr. Harkins, he says that prefabricated cell splints can be used as temporary therapeutic measures. In this case, he will prove if the prefabricated cell splints can help us in these cases when the, uh, our patient has clicking in, our, in their temporal mandibular joints. He took 84 patients with clicks. None of them had any treatment before. And he saw that 74 of these 84 patients have a noticeable decrease and 10%, they don't, they don't have any type of uh, clicking after using these prefabricated soft splints. So he says that this is a, a transcend occlusal changes like uh, Dr. Sin said, but this is a temporary measure you can take. So you can uh, see if you're gonna have good results with a hard splint. So if you give this type of splints to your patient and the trouble doesn't go away, the problem doesn't go away, maybe your hard acrylic splint will also uh, fail to reduce the problem and maybe you have to take it to another specialist, maybe a maxillofacial to have arthrocentesis or something else but this can be used as a method to give you an early overview of the problem. It's gonna be resolved and it's not going to be resolved. Later, we find in 1990, the year that I was born, that there's an association between 
the problems uh, of headaches and uh, the uh, colossal problems that the patient has. In this case, Dr. Quile wants to know if there's a relation and what relation we can have with different types of headaches and what we can do or what can we offer as a dentist to our patients in, in order to those types of headaches. He took three types of headaches. The first one's the migraine, tension headache, and tension vascular headache. In three cases, they used the heart splint, the soft splint, and no splint at all. He saw then 82% of the suffering from migraine or the tensional vascular headache were significantly, significantly decreased or cured. They didn't have any problems at all with the soft splint. So what happens to the other 18%? These people have the ones that's called tension headache. Migraine, we know that it's uh, in some times, is not always the problem. But it's too hard, the, the pain they have, that sometimes they get nausea, they get vomiting. They, have a, uh, they can't do whatever they want because they're suffering pain, but it's uh, in some episodes. The tension headache is chronic, it's always having this type of headache. And the tensional vascular headache is a mixture between those two. So if it's related to migraine, we can assure it has... Uh, good results using a soft spleen. In this case, uh, Dr. Quile did it. So that's why we know it can help us. Dr. Peter Hill, 1998, he says that no scientific data exists to, su to, to suggest that heart or soft spleens are, are better. That is heart is more benefit for the patient or someone. So I will make this investigation and I will tell you which one is better. He took 23 patients, being the, the sample not as big as they wanted, but he found that there's no difference if you use hard or soft uh, night guard. It's going to help the patient. Both are going to help the patient, uh, independently if it's a, a male or a female. So use a mouth guard. Uh, doesn't matter if it's hard or soft. That's the explanation of the results that the, the Dr. Peter Hill says. But uh, he also says that it's a, it's a small sample, so you can't take it very seriously. But this is a, a point where we can study the differences that say soft or hard. After that, 1999, uh, Dr. Alcuran, he wants to study the difference uh, the immediate difference when using a hard or soft splint. In this case, he's uh, searching for the EMG activity on the masseter and the temporalis muscles. He uses uh, three groups, no splint, hard splint, and uh, soft splint. And he watches the immediate reaction on these muscles after using the hard and soft splint. And he says that there was an increase in the temporal temporalis and masseter on the soft splints. And on the other hand, the hard splints, there was a decrease. This, he says that it's maybe because of soft material and it's more comfortable for the patient and it's easy to fabricate and the patient feels, uh, feels good to chew on this type of material. But remember, this is the immediate effect of using of these mouth guards. What happens if we use it with a period of time. In this case, we're talking about three to four months. Dr. Alan Carr Jr., he said, well, we're gonna watch what happens with three months, only three months of treatment with heart splints, soft splints, and non splints at all. He took these 45 patients and they were diagnosed with myofascial pain and dysfunction and divided in these three groups. The study lasted 90 days, three months, and they have evaluations at the week, month, two months, three months. And he found that there was no significant difference between hard splint or soft splint. So if you use hard or soft, in this case with patients that have dysfunction, myofascial pain, there will be no problem. So 
we, we said an immediate effect is that soft ones may make more activity. We will see now that in a long period of time, it will have the same results. He also said that maybe it's more comfortable to use a soft one, but that's the only difference, the comfort of the patient, but the results are going to be the same. Statistically, there's no difference. 2009, we talk about uh, Dr. Noriyuki Narita. He says that clenching will be recorded with the EEG. And we have this, also this type of groups, nose spleen, soft spleen, heart spleen. He was looking for the awareness of tiredness of the patient. He's looking about, uh, also looking for the backboard applied on heart or soft spleen. And he's looking also for the EEG power spectrum. After they did it for three months also, he saw that in the nose spleen and the heart spleen group didn't cause an alteration in awareness of awareness by force or the EEG power spectrum. On the other hand, he saw that soft splints group will, are, will rise this awareness of tiredness. If you're biting of something, if you have your chewing gum, and you are biting and chewing, chewing for 15 minutes, you will feel tired. What's happening right there? Your body tell me, is telling your mind, well, this is absorbing my force. Maybe I will get tired soon. So let's uh, bring down the forces. Let's go to calm down. And this is why the awareness of tiredness is going to increase. And also the bite force is going to be lowered. So, this is uh, one of the results that he had in the study and he's telling us and he's also going to uh, give this comfort to the patient that is biting and unbiting and has this problem. So soft splints are better qualified in this article. 2015, more recent studies, and Dr. Seifeldin, he says that soft versus hard occlusal splints therapy, which one is going to be better? He says that there is not too much uh, evidence to base on. There are a lot of contradictions. So he wants to reevaluate these two types of splints. He do the treatment for four months in 50 patients with three groups also, hard splints, soft splints, no splints at all, so via the control group. And he, sa and he saw that both splints have their benefits. However, the soft splint give an early improvement in the patient. Remember the last one that says that uh, the awareness of tiredness, this is a part it will be working that part of the awareness of tiredness and the bite force uh, being decreased. So that's why we have these early improvements. So in the opinion of Dr. Seifeldin, he says soft splints are better, better for patients that have these TMDs. 2016, and we have the same problems. We're gonna reevaluate the hard splints, the soft splints, and we're gonna add a new type of splints that is called hydrostatic splints. These type of splints, they have liquid in the occlusal phases. So when you buy this type of gel, we'll fill up uh, the occlusal phase, and then we get hard in that area. So it's a semi-fluid uh, liquid, it's hard and soft maybe at the same time. So they use these three type of uh, splints. <clears throat> this study advocates the use of splints because if you use any type of splint, you will have good results. And he saw that in this case, the soft splints are simple, are minimum side effects. It's good for the patient, has good comfort in the patient, good fit. It's not invasive in the patient. We only took the, uh, take the impression and that's all. We're not gonna prepare something. On, we're not invading the biology of the patient, only taking the impression, and it's more comfortable for the patient. The result uh, he had was that the three types, uh, the three groups reduce the pain. So we're back to hard, soft, or hydrostatic pain. Doesn't matter. Each of them will uh, work uh, in our patients. So you choose between hard, soft, or hydrostatic, knowing that the soft ones are going to give you early improvement 
and it's more comfortable for the patient. And the last but not least uh, article, this uh, article was uh, written by a doctor that has a last name similar to some uh, sauce used in the Chinese food. Dr. Shiharsha, not Shiharsha, Shiharsha, in 2018, two years ago, he wanted to look at the cortisol levels of the breast in patients. This, uh, uh, this topic, I also abort this topic in my course, in my Malcar courses. We, he wanted to know how these soft splints will affect the release of cortisol on these patients. Cortisol known as the stress uh, hormone. So we know that bruises in patients, you know, the treatments we use on those patients are between behavioral techniques, going to a psychiatrist, as a, some psychology uh, therapy, maybe some intraoral devices, medi medications, or some, sometimes electrical stimulation. So we're talking about dentists, we're gonna talk about the intraoral devices, the soft splints in this case. He's, he knows that if the soft splints easily distributes the loads, it's better tolerated, it's simple, it's reversible. If you don't like, if the patient don't like what he's getting with this type of splint, he just needs to remove it and that's all. It's reversible. And that's, it's not invasive and it's pretty economic to the patient. So the, how much I need to charge for my splints, we're gonna talk about later. So in this case, 20 patients with bruxism and tooth wear were analyzed, and he saw in the saliva cortisol that was, that was an increase when the patient is a bruxism, bruxist. And we, he, when he used a soft clean on those patients, the levels dropped 70% of the cases. What happens with the other 30% of the cases? The other 30% are the patients that they are always angry with anything in life. They wake up in the morning and they are, they are angry because they wake up. They took their breakfast or maybe they have uh, uh, something to go to lunch or they're having a brunch or anything and they're angry because they didn't have what they wanted for the brunch. They are always angry. We know that they are type of patients, the ones that are cooperate with us. They talk about, they talk a lot. Some patients become our friends. Some patients, we don't want to see them again because they're very difficult to be uh, treated. So these difficult patients, they're gonna be mad. They're gonna be apprehensive all day. It doesn't matter if you gave your patient a hard, soft spleen, you don't will have any improvements. In these cases, you will need some behavioral techniques plus medication. And maybe after that, you will use a hard, soft spleen to release problems of wearing the tooth. But in this case, we saw that there have been improvements using the mouth guard. What happens with this type of patient? He has a lot of stress, so he releases cortisol. The patient grinds his teeth and he feels a sort, a sort of type of comfort. Why do these patients have this type of comfort? They don't know, but in their brain, they're releasing some hormones. They're I, know, I don't know if it's pronounced correctly, but catecholamines will uh, fight cortisol and will help this, horm this stress hormone to decrease. That's why the patient feels that relief when he's grinding. It will, it will give our patient something to grind on and, uh, and they, they don't have that wear. That's a good thing we can do for our patient. The better or the best job we can do is to give something that prevents the wearing and the programs the, the patient the programs the patient so it don't won't happen again. But all of these treatments has to be uh, at the same time as he's having a behavioral te uh, therapy. 
because the problem is not in their in her teeth, in his teeth. The problem is in her mind or his mind. Something is uh, bothering him or her, so he needs to take some other type of treatments. So the catecholamines, catecholamines will fight the cortisol, bringing down the, these levels and having these results. After that, we can use hard, soft laminates, or we can use also these type of laminates, the dual laminates. We will find two that are called e-gasket and dual laminates. Both have the same indications, both have the same thickness. What it will be the difference between those? The difference is the e-gasket is gonna be more soft than hard if we buy uh, one of these laminates that is three millimeters of uh, thickness, two millimeters are gonna be soft and one millimeter is gonna be hard. So you want something that is more soft than hard, you go and get the e-gasket. You want something that's more hard than soft, you go for the Proform Dual Laminate. These, these laminates also have their side. If you buy the e-gasket, you have to put it in this case, it will have the, the, same, the size uh, mark on the, the laminates. The, the soft part is going to be uh, in, the, in the teeth area, and the hard part is going to be to the heating device. In the other uh, case, it's going to be the other otherwise. But in this case, the droop technique, the height of the model, it won't be the same. The height of the model is gonna be the same, but the droop technique, we don't apply that. In this case, we preheat the soft side between uh, 30 seconds to one minute and 30 seconds. And after that, we can uh, turn it over and heat the hard side of the laminate to uh, between 30 seconds to 45 seconds. So we can have this uh, a little bit of the droop. If you try to do the same technique as the soft splints or the hard splints, you will get this type of results. You will get smoke, and where there's smoke, you will also get fire. So if you don't want this, you need to preheat the soft side, after, and then after, uh, you will need to heat the hard side. How much do I need to charge for my mouth guards, my splints? You will, you will see that you can buy some mouth guards, some mouthpieces, some mouth, uh, your splints from 90 cent, 98 cents plus the shipping handling. And the most expensive one that I found is that that one is called Otis mail or order. You take the impression material you take the impression yourself and you send it to them and they make you your night guard and it costs a hundred dollars. If it's something that you can buy for one dollar, fifty dollars, forty dollars, thirty dollars in the market, why something that is specialized, that is custom made, something that we study to make it, why are we gonna charge less than that? That's not fair for us. And uh, we have to be, in this case, we have to be fair. If we take too much time to make this splint, I need you to charge my time also. It's not because uh, of the materials very cheap or very expensive, because the material is something, but your time, it's more valuable. It costs more your time than the material. So you're gonna spend two, three, four hours making some splint, you need to charge for those four hours. Maybe you're leaving behind some uh, familiar plans, maybe you were going picnic, maybe you have some celebration, you have to go, but you're not going because you need to make this work. So you're wasting, well, you're not wasting, you're spending your time in something, you need to charge also for that time. And it depends also where are you at. It's not the same, the rent is not the same 
if you are in Fifth Avenue in New York or you are near the, uh, I think it's the Gillette Stadium in Chicago or you're near the uh, La Cantera Mall in San Antonio, it's not the same if you're in those areas and you are in some uh, cheaper rent uh, sites. So it's here the same in Mexico. It depends in which area, which area you are, you have to charge because it's not the same rent. It's not the same you pay maybe $2,000 a month or maybe you're paying $20,000 a month. It's not the same. So you have to take all of this so, and, and think about how much your time costs so you can charge uh, something that is fair. So, uh, to finish this webinar and pass to the section of questions and answers, if you have questions, if you don't have, uh, I will leave you my uh, social media so you can reach to me every time you want. Every If you have some uh, doubts after this webinar, you can reach me. You only need to tell me I took your webinar with Keystone Industries and I will add you to Facebook, Instagram. Um, I, I, I'm making this because I have a lot of uh, uh, messages in my inbox and I give this type of treatment to the persons that I take in my course first, then the other persons. I answer all the messages, but I answer first the person that I went to my courses, to my webinars, to my uh, lectures. And this uh, quote uh, that this Washington did, uh, when I re uh, read it, when I heard it the first time, it's, uh, it was a time I was having a lot of doubts. I was failing, I was having troubles with my mouth guards. They were delaminated, they were getting cloudy, they were getting yellow. I had a lot of troubles during the way, during the, these past few years. Uh, maybe we all, in October, I think it's going to be our ninth ninth anniversary so there are several years we have very very few successful mouth guards and i thought well maybe this is not my my area i will quit and this quote appeared nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take some risks anything that comes to you that is free that doesn't cost you in this case this webinar is free but it's costing you time so you will take the good tips or anything you want from this uh, lecture and you will apply it to your uh, practice. But something you see on YouTube, maybe you don't pay so much attention. Uh, some guy from a, some uh, dental brand goes, here you have doctor, use this type of uh, like your uh, resin. You say, okay, yeah, thank you. But if you buy something, you will appreciate it more, you will take care of it more. So that's why nothing in life is worthwhile until you take a risk. You're taking a risk. I took a huge risk uh, entering the area of mouth guards, of sports dentistry here in Mexico because uh, before me, given those lectures, there was nobody. Uh, I didn't know I was the first when I started. I just wanted to give the word to get the knowledge about sport dentistry and later i found it was the first one it was okay we're making something uh, it doesn't matter i'm the first i'm the last one what it matters is that i'm given the information and i want you to give the information also this chain reaction of giving the information about mouth guards or splints or sport dentistry will uh, arrive sometime to our patients and our patient will have this education of taking care of this prevention on splints, on mouth guards. Here in Mexico, we have very, pretty, pretty bad uh, education in, in that area. Uh, dentists, right now here in Mexico, due to COVID-19, uh, are working only emergency treatments. Well, here in Mexico, we always work with only emergency treatments. Patients don't go to the doctor or to the dentist uh, to preventions. They only go when they have pain. So we have, we have been working almost the same before the COVID and right now. 
uh, things from them education but the best is that only we only attend or treat uh, prevention appointments but we're in the, in the way of that so to finish i would recommend you and maybe i'm going to say you that it's mandatory to have these applications these first two applications on your cell phone or your tablet these applications are uh, from the IADT, the International Academy for Dental Trauma. They are the ones that made the Dental Trauma, dental trauma Guide that I'm a member of, the uh, Dental Trauma Guide. And they give us a protocol depending on what injury the patient has. This application, Tooth SOS, Dental Trauma, are based on the same dental trauma has some a little more experience from a doctor of Switzerland and they are both uh, the same. They are both uh, accessories, applications that we can use to help saving tooths. In this case, uh, you'll see an accident. You will see that the tooth is cut off. It has a, a connection with a nerve. It's an abulsion. It has an intrusion. It has been moved to the palatal area, to the sides. It depends on what you see, it's what you answer in the first question. Then it will be asking you, you will be answered until you get the diagnosis, and it will say you the treatment you have to use. Maybe you'll say, well, the, uh, it doesn't matter you have your dental appointment this week or next week, uh, it won't happen anything, just be careful with these things. Or maybe it says, you have to go right now with the teeth in milk or behind your, uh, underneath your thumb or something like that, you will say what you need to do in this case to save the tooth. Both applications do the same. And the uh, other applications I will recommend you to download. Well, you, uh, here, well, in the United States, I have been watching the news and reading that you're going back to normality, uh, to normal life normal, the new normal life, and maybe you can go jogging outside, having more exercise, maybe not, you don't have your gym opened yet. We need to stay uh, healthy, we need to stay making some exercise, because uh, as if we do exercise, we're gonna release, in this case, uh, serotonin and dopamine that are hormones that are going to make us feel happy, feel relaxed. And if we're thinking about we're not working or we are uh, on, we, it's the first week that I'm working, I have to pay the bills from the last month and this month. And we're going to be so stressed that we're going to have, we're going to have problems. So making exercise will help with that. These three applications are very good. I'm right now I'm using the Nike training and Adidas training. Um, the one uh, the Fitbit coach, if you have the Fitbit uh, watch, it's going to be better for you. Nike training is a little bit uh, tough. It's better, I think it's better than Adidas because of the results I'm watching in this application. Right here in Mexico, uh, the gyms are closed. Uh, some of the Mexican states are going to start uh, welcoming back the workers to the factories uh, from this Monday uh, so it's gonna be a month that we're gonna to, we're gonna return to the new normal life and it's, uh, it's it's going to be a test if we can bring all of the uh, all the business to a hundred percent of uh, its capacity right now they're gonna lens they're going to they're gonna launch uh, the restaurants, the cinema, the theaters, movie theaters to a third part of their capacity. So we are a little bit uh, back in the act of uh, releasing the people to the normal life if we compare to the United States, to Spain, to Italy, to China. But we hope we can get to back to life. We can back we can get back to giving this type of courses or math cards in, in real life. Well, in pr me being present there, 
me being there. Uh, right now, we're working, we're working on an online course, but it's not going to be the same. We need to be in real life to give you some tips, to be your coach during that course. And if you want to get to, in touch with me, to uh, know if we're going to give some course near your city. Well, right now, we're only working here in Mexico and Latin America. We have plans to go to the United States, Canada, to Spain in some other time. But you can uh, reach me. You have some troubles doing your screens. I'll leave you with my social media. You can add me on Facebook as Marco Tulio Bocanegra. That's my personal Facebook. The MouthGuards uh, site, the fan page is Black MouthGuards. On Instagram, you will find Black MouthGuards as Black underscore MouthGuards. And you can find me also as uh, Marco Tulio BH. It's uh, Marco, Marco Tulio BH. All of this in one word. Those are my social media you want to reach me uh, by those uh, vias you can do it just remember to tell me you took this uh, webinar with us and for your attention muchas gracias thank you a lot for being here for your patience i hope you understand me i uh, remember english is not my native language i am mexican i always, always live in mexico I know English because I studied some school. I have to practice, and I have the opportunity to practice with my cousins, with my nephews, and the travels that I have been to the United States. So I hope you understand me. I hope you get something useful from this webinar. And muchas gracias. Thank you, Dr. Bocanegra. Um, we do have two questions in the chat. Okay. Um, first one is, do you mind sharing how do you make the custom colored laminate? Uh, do I mind sharing? Yes, I want. No, uh, <laughs> the process that I do is cutting up uh, the colors that I want. And the way we can uh, fusion these uh, laminates that we cut, there are several uh, types of uh, methods. The one that I use is with heat and pressure. We are talking about digital pressure. We have to apply heat on both sides where we're going to fusion, and then we apply a little bit of pressure with our fingertips being soaked on water so we don't get burned, and we apply some pressure. I, in the final, uh, after we attach these two sides or three or four parts, I apply some pressure, bending it, so I can see all of this is in one piece. If I see some holes, I apply some heat and I apply pressure in that area. It's, it's only about pressure and heat and having no interference like water, grease. If you're touching your head without gloves and you touch a mouth guard, it's going to be contaminated and it won't uh, get a, a, a fusion. Okay. Um, the next one is, do you make math guards for new champion? Um, I don't think I'm going to pronounce this right. Justin Gaith? I don't know if that's the name of someone. No. no, no. Okay. I, I have uh, sponsored some fighters, uh, UFC fighters, uh, like Irene Aldana, uh, Alexa Grasso, and also some fighters in Bellator MMA, Bellator Kickboxing. And Combate Americas, that is a, it's, it was from Mexico, then it's in Mexico, started, uh, United States and Canada, then Latin America. So it's, yeah, it's now international. And Combate Americas, also Invicta FC, I have some uh, fighters there. I've been sponsored some uh, fighters all around the globe. Okay, perfect. Um, and I think that's all the questions that we have for today. Okay. So thank you very much. That was an awesome presentation. Thank you. Um, Remember, you can uh, add me on Facebook. You can ask me everything you want after and on my social media. All right. And I'm going to throw my email in the chat just in case anyone needs to reach out to Keystone. So I'm going to do that right now. S. McLean. Don't mind.
There we go. It's in the chat. Um, and I, I guess that's it. So thank you, Dr. Bocanegra.